the ACORN stuff and to any aspect, or has the DOJ responded in any way? Uh, I don't know, uh, Dan, I don't know if the DOJ has responded to Leader Boehner's request to them directly. Uh, I believe that's why Leader Boehner uh, sent his letter to the President this morning asking that, uh, asking him to encourage the DOJ to get involved in, and not just look at it from an Ohio level, but look at it as, as an issue that needs to be uh, investigated and investigated quickly uh, uh, from a from a 50 state uh, from a 50 state standpoint. And you said other legal, uh, I mean other avenues, and you talked about the counties, but that would you say disruptive? Can you give me an idea what what I mean? I, I have a hard time envisioning where else can you go. Yeah, it's, I mean, what we we've got we've got. Uh, we have other we have other options and alternatives to uh, available to us. Uh, we're evaluating those and, and, and the pros and cons of them. Uh, Are know, they legal in nature? Uh, some, but not all. Some, but not all. Considering Ohio's voter ID requirement at the polls, can you give some kind of hypothetical example of, of where someone could still vote fraudulently with a with a bad registration, even when you're required <laughs> to show here's here's who I am, here's my address. Yeah, well, I think the I think the thing I'll answer that with with an example of another lawsuit, uh, and and where this whole system starts to break down is and is is on this issue of ID, uh, with with the lawsuit that is now in the federal courts, uh, essentially asking for uh, the the state ID laws to be uh, to be set aside for this election. That's where that's where you start to see a systematic breakdown in in the election system in the state of Ohio. Uh, let's go back all the way back to to what Secretary. To, to, let's go back and look at the Secretary of State's uh, history in this office. Uh, the first thing she did right out of the box was intimidate, uh, tried to silence and intimidate and remove her critics from boards of elections. Uh, if you talk to any most board of elections officials around the state, uh, they don't want to say a cross word. Uh, they don't. They are intimidated by by her. Uh, and, and fear that, that she will take their appointment um, away from them when given an opportunity. Uh, that's no way to run a local board of elections. Uh, we are now seeing a, a systematic breakdown in the ID provisions. Uh, earlier this year, Secretary Bruner uh, created an option where, where colleges could give out fake utility bills to college students uh, and as a way of, of using and, and allowed to use that as their ID. But that clearly wasn't contemplated uh, in the ID provisions. Uh, we then saw same-day registration where we believed it didn't exist. We saw her disenfranchise tens of thousands of Republican absentee voters on a technicality that we think was just that, a technicality. Uh, she blocked poll observers. Uh, she blocked uh, you know, people, people going in and watching this process. Now we see uh, an effort to, uh, to, to withhold information about 200,000 mismatched voter registration forms. And then finally, this ID lawsuit, uh, it's currently, uh, uh, it's, it's centering right now around uh, ID provisions for, for the homeless, uh, and, uh, but we believe that the Secretary and the Court have been in discussions and in negotiations yesterday and today uh, where there is an effort to try to suspend uh, the ID provisions, the state ID provisions uh, completely. And, and that, is, that is a grave issue and a grave concern when you know that, that there are fraudulent and fake voter registrations in the system. The Secretary of State has broken down every every uh, every check and balance on the system, and now uh, it would appear that the Secretary is party to a uh, party to a negotiation to that would eliminate the ID provisions. She just couldn't do that arbitrarily, right? Uh, it's uh, it's well, and it's a law. We've, seen, we've right? seen her do a lot of things arbitrarily. Uh, the well, it's in a court. It's in the courts now. I mean, a court would have to agree with mm -hmm. her. Last well, question, guys. You, you said that you weren't sure about the validity or, or about the, what happened with the security breach. Do you doubt that there were death threats against Secretary Bruner that have been reported? Uh, I have no I, I have no information about it. I know this bill that that, you know, that I get the same sorts of phone calls here. Uh, you know, pick up the phone out here any day. Uh, we get the same we get the same sorts of letters. We get the same sorts of, of phone calls. Uh, neither of them are right. Neither of them are appropriate. Neither of them, none of them, are acceptable. Uh, those kinds of those kinds of actions, whether be they from Republicans uh, or Democrats, uh, there is no place for that in this election. Uh, what we all want and what we all expect is a fair shot. Uh, is a fair shot. Give my give my candidates a level playing field, uh, and and I'll and I'll take the results, whatever they may be on election day. Uh, but uh, but uh, 
those sorts of those sorts of, of, of actions, those sorts of death threats, those sorts of, of, uh, of nasty phone calls that we all get in these very in these very heated partisan uh, in these very heated and partisan uh, uh, times uh, are simply unacceptable, and there's no place for them in this in this business. Kevin, you say you've had death threats against you? Uh, I have had nasty uh, I have had nasty phone calls as well. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had asked the like the police to? Uh, I have not. Okay.